Ask the Podcast Coach for June 3rd, 2023. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting, bringing 18 years of podcasting experience to the, the mic and right over there bringing i did the math earlier 14 years something of, like that of something podcasting like that. experience the one and only jim cullison from the average guy.tv jim how's it going buddy greetings dave happy saturday morning to you happy day after national donut day did you just did you survive the donut apocalypse from i yesterday? did <laughs> i felt bad we'll we'll be talking about mark uh from podcast branding but not only was a national donut day but uh he's in canada Tim Hortons, a, oh, a, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and Tim Horton brought back a, um, a donut. They had retired like his favorite and they brought it back and, um, he, he did indulge a smidge. Nice. So, uh, nice. congrats yeah. on that, Mark. You, you don't get it often to, to do that, <laughs> but, uh, you know what good goes good with a donut. That's right. Absolutely. A nice pop and height, uh, thing of, uh, Java. And of course, that coffee pour is brought to you by the one and only Mark over at podcastbranding.co. If you are, look, if you're looking to look good, and who doesn't want to look good? I want to look good. And uh, Mark can help you with that because they are going to see you before they hear you. I just listened to Daniel J. Lewis was talking about, uh, you know, doing a rebrand and refreshing your rebrand. Well, Mark can help with that. Not only is he an award-winning graphic artist, but he's also a podcaster. So you don't have to explain to him that like it's kind of like radio, but it's on the internet. You don't have to have that conversation. In fact, he's going to sit down with you one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to listen to your show. He's going to look at your website. And he can help with your artwork. He can help with any kind of league management. If you need a whole new website, if you need a branding just overhaul, Mark is the guy to go to. His website again, podcastbranding.com co and i've used him i'm not just saying this because mark is paying me although mark is paying me but check out podcast rodeo show check out squad oh, look at me I'm, I'm being i feel like i'm at the oscars being played off <laughs> <laughs> not watching the dial no it's all right it's all right big thanks to our good friend dan lefeb over there at based on a true story podcast based on a true story podcast.com he's made it all the way through the chair and noble series so if you wanted to binge on that there's five episodes involved in that and you can go out there now and get those done men remember if you're if you want to know what's this based on a true story or how factual is this dan has the answer check it out based on a true story podcast.com dan thanks for your sponsorship there we go here's a, a fun question i hit the wrong button i went to remove the uh thing and kick kick jim out maybe you need a donut this morning that's it something <laughs> to get me awake so here's here's a, a topic from dave we are on twitter spaces today so if you have a question just raise your hand and we'll bring it up but one of the things we always tell everybody right is hey like when you're doing your podcast just just be yourself like people either like you or they won't but but don't try to be somebody that's not you and uh jammin will get to you in just a second we don't have to uh we don't have to vet jammin i i know jammin um but we say to be ourselves but when you record your show, Jim, here's the question. Is it a performance? Hmm. Like right now, are we performing? Because we're yes. just kind of talking. Yes. But on the other hand, I am talking slightly different because it's kind of interesting because we'll we'll be talking here. And the minute we hit stop, you're like, oh, you know what? That was a pretty good show. Yeah. It was a yeah, bad yeah. show. Yeah. And yeah. so because somebody was asking, like, how do I sound like I am not reading and this and that. And I was kind of like, well, you don't have to be pukey radio person. Like, hey, welcome to Ask the Podcast Coach, everybody. All right. You, like, but you kind of can't go, hey, welcome to Ask the Podcast Coach, where, you know, we answer questions and stuff. I don't know. I mean, you, you could do that if you wanted to, right? I mean, you could be that. You could. Right? Yeah. I mean, look at, look at, there's comedians. Um, oh, man. Uh, uh, Max Head, 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 Headridge, Hedberg. What well, Steve, Stephen Wright. Steve, Stephen Wright, yeah, those guys. Uh, I spent right. spot remover on my dog, and mm -hmm. now I can't find him. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's a shtick, right? I mean, those right. guys—they're kind of that way. But so you could. I mean, I think your advice is 
is good. Just be you in the process. Yeah. Be the best you because you can't fake it. If it's a if it's a big fake job, it's gonna be tough to fake it. Although, although that being said, a lot of good actors play a part for a lot of years and they do just fine. So I just say do what you want. Right. Yeah. The interesting thing um about Stephen Wright, and I know this because of Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, he came on was so different, right? Because you got the Jerry Seinfeld, what's wrong with these people, right? And people are kind of, again, they're performing. Stephen Wright comes out and his whole delivery is just, you know, these weird one-liner kind of things. And he he killed so hard. And I think he appeared on Monday. Johnny Carson brought him back on Friday, to which Stephen Wright was like, I just did my whole act. Like, I have to come up with the whole (laughs) thing. But it was really, he's one of the few people that was on... Because back then, the you know, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, if you were on that, like that was your career. And if Johnny gave you the thumbs down, you might as well start washing dishes because, uh, you know, you uh, you're 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 not going to make it. So uh, yeah. Fred says you you perform before your audience and you converse with your followers. Ah, that's an interesting take on that. So, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, we're going to bring Jammin up. He wants to talk about the difference between StreamYard and Squadcast. So, Jammin, how are you, buddy? Are you at the mall? Doing well. No, I'm at the Orlando airport. I've been traveling, so it might, <laughs> might be kind of loud. I'm using AirPods. So. That's all right. Hey, I'm getting ready to launch the second uh, podcast. You know I've been working with you. I've been a proud student of uh, school podcasting for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm wanting to do on the second one video and audio. I know, obviously, you guys use Stream StreamYard. You and I have texted a little bit this week. Pat Flynn recommends uh, Squadcast. What's the difference between the two? Can you really go wrong with either one? And then is there anything special I need to make sure I do uh, now that I'm adding video, uh, incorporating that into the new podcast? Yeah, the biggest difference is StreamYard. Its focus is for streaming live. And it, I can get separate audio tracks. Jim, can we get separate video? for uh, Here um, on StreamYard? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know for sure. I can look it up. I don't I don't think so. On Squadcast, you get separate audio and separate video. And I've never done the video thing on Squadcast, so I'm not I'm not exactly you know, I don't have first hand experience with that. Because I know the same thing with Riverside. When I think about trying to get everything to line up with two separate videos and two separate audios, my brain hurts. Um and I would probably, you're going to need a, a beefier computer if you don't have one, because um, you're talking something, a, a great free tool for video editing is DaVinci Resolve. It has more features in it than many video editors that you have to pay for. Um, and I've seen a lot of people on YouTube are now switching to that. They're like, all of a sudden, everybody discovered it. I've known it. It does have a learning curve, but the good news is, kind of like Audacity, because it's free, there are a ton of uh, tutorials on it. So that's the only thing, you know, when you do, because you have to figure out who's talking when or, or if, you're, if you're switching cameras or if you're just doing something like this where we're both online. The nice thing about StreamYard is when I get done, it's done. I, now, if I want to go back and edit, I could download the video and do that whole nine yards. But uh, uh, Okay, so if I'm not planning on doing a live stream, we're just recording it and then uploading it later. StreamYard isn't my best option if I'm not doing a live test or yeah. Jim, did you see Bunny Chance? Yeah, did they, you look? they do have separate video, yes. Oh, yes. Um, then I'd go by price. Um, or I'm I I know squad we, we do. I'm sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. At, we do at Gallup, we do just a lot of recordings using StreamYard and we're not broadcasting. So it's a great platform just to get in there and record. Or to broadcast. I mean, it'll do both, and it does both very well. We have had very little problems with it. There was a point in time where we're getting a little tick in the audio for some reason. We've been trying to try shoot the, or to troubleshoot that down to see if that's them or whatever. But but it, it works. You could you could do both on it. All right. If Dave recommends Streamyard, that's where I'm going. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's uh, I, the nice thing about it. I don't think we've had an issue with Streamyard that wasn't like you know listener um or, or or operator error kind of thing 
Uh, but I'm a either one. I think is good. But I, to me, I love the thing with Streamyard because we're doing this live. That's why I use yeah. Streamyard here. It, may, it makes it easy. But it does. We 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 have a conference coming up next week, and we did some interviews. And it's just as easy to go into Streamyard and set it up as a recording only. Jump yeah. in here and do this right, and, and and get it done. I you can have them separate, or you can say no. The the key on on both audio and video separate tracks, you have to have good bandwidth and you have to tell them don't close your browser window until that thing is completely uploaded. Right. You yeah. have to have to have to. So there's a little bit of, of prep for that, but I, I think either one would probably work pretty well. Yeah. Um, Chris says Riverside does this as well. And I've heard this many a time, Yeah, but I've had audio drift with them, meaning all of a sudden your guest is answering the question before you've done That's asking it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you moved to StreamYard and has no issues with drift. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people use StreamYard because they got two million in some sort of grant a couple eh, sometime last year, and they advertise just bunches everywhere. So you know that's what it's supposed to do. But I've I've known people now. I also know people that love it. So it's, it's either a love hate thing. It seems like you either have great luck with it. Or you don't, which is kind of the same for every company, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Michael Ray, there is a name I have not heard in a while. My goodness. Yeah, Good to welcome, see you. welcome back. Yeah. What's the best teaching using whiteboard in a talking head video in bed that I see people move it around? Huh. Trying to dissect. So, in other words, having uh, like an instructional. So, you might have the picture of the person talking with a whiteboard up where they're doing things yeah. on it. And it, you can actually do that here pretty easily with a whiteboard program. I mean, yeah, a whiteboard program and and just you know you set the different. Yeah, you, know, you can put there's different looks here. You can go this way with it or the presentation. Yeah. We don't have a presentation up, so that's um, Dave. Throw your. I mean, you do this during the break, right? When we're we're doing yeah you could you could go that where that screen is your board and then you could whiteboard there if you want to do it that oh, way. oh and see i can go here oh that's edit the layout all right i thought i could write on this but i can't um i know you can do it in zoom yeah zoom has it built in yeah so yeah. that's an that's another one if you want to draw i also i don't yeah, have the it. audience participation stuff in zoom is pretty good like, yeah. you know, you, you can add different things to the screen and highlight stuff and circle stuff. It's it, it's actually pretty decent in Zoom. Yeah. Uh, Greg said, Greg, Craig, by the way, nice shirt today. Inglés podcast. I like it. I like he it. says, I overlay myself over PowerPoint slides using yep. a green screen. I do not have the hairline for a green screen. <laughs> Does um, it get real fuzzy on the... On no, the what happens is, because you have to have really good lighting. So I've got decent lights. You need a backlight. You need it's green screen is all about making that green like one color, like no shadows. And because my hair is not as thick as it used to be, um, the green shines through my hair. Mm -hmm. And consequently, then you end up with this weird halo thing going on. And I was over at uh, Loria Petrucci. Mm -hmm. I forget. Live streaming pros. I think it is something like that. Or is that Ross? Anyway, she's been live streaming forever. And they have a rule over there, like no no green screen. They are a pain in the butt. I have one sitting right there that I'm never going to use. So, um, but uh, uh, speaking of Craig, it's Craig. I'll take Craig for 200, Alex. Uh, Craig from uh, Live Well and Flourish. Uh, he said, hey, Riverside's worked well for him. But uh, again, your mileage yeah. may vary. Yeah. So, you know, that's really one of the things where, because somebody asked me, because we were talking about it, uh, you know, there's Cap Show, there's Cast Magic. There's um, Swell AI, there's Pod Squeeze. They're like, which one's the best? I go, they all have some sort of trial. Click on it and go to town. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, Coach Dave has it. He goes, my hair, my I need a, a light back here to do that and uh, behind you. Yeah, so it's it, green screen is all about the lighting. And um, this room, and there's, not, not there's some people up. who love it. And there's some people who just like, I hate it. I, I, you can see it immediately on oh, somebody yeah. and you're like, stop, just turn it off. Well, but there's a wall behind me. There's a wall behind everybody. Like yeah. get over it. It's fine. That yeah. that's my personal. I'm, I, then people want to <laughs> blur their backgrounds and you're like, just, oh, yeah. it's fine. Yes. It's oh, that looks, 
the blurred background always looks good. Speaking of losing half your head. Yeah, I, uh, it was, uh, I was talking, I was doing coaching last night with a member of the school of podcasting and he comes on and he's got like, um, umbrellas, you know, the big ones, like on a porch kind of thing. And the wind is blowing. I go, I got to give you credit. That is one really creative green screen. He goes, no, I'm actually on a, he goes, I'm outside. It's California. (laughs) I was like, okay. Um, yeah, here's a good one. Bill says, Bill Conrad, what is it? Like old timer day? It asks the alumni. podcast. Alumni, alumni day. day, yes. Um, I don't know anybody who has a bad word to say about Ecamm. I know Elsie Escobar just usually I need to get Ecamm now that I have a Mac. That's why I never used it. But uh how does it compare to StreamYard? More features, uh, probably a little more powerful, but with more features comes I don't know what their interface is like, but I know you can it will do your, uh, it'll do your laundry. It, it does everything in eCam. I'm not sure what the going rate is for that, but uh, uh, you know, it's um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Shaman says, "Hey, he's gonna say I'm not an old timer." Well, you know, I was. Did I tell you about? Yeah, I told you guys about the guy at uh, podcast show London that called me old, and yeah. then wanted to know if we wanted a partner. I'm like, that's not a good opening line. You uh, shouldn't insult the person you're trying to sell to. That's generally not. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been doing sales for a long time, but yeah, generally not a great idea. Yeah. Um. All right. Here is, here's a fun one. This is from Lady. I'm gonna say Kezi. I was on Reddit this morning, and um, they they Reddit's a fun place. Well, before I read that, Jim. Oh uh, yeah, Jim is shaking his head. Your your thoughts on Reddit? Yeah, there's there's two two um, areas I avoid on the internet. YouTube comments are yeah. one. Reddit, the whole site is is the is the second. I just it's not now. There, listen. There's some great site. There's some great um, subreddits there that are moderated well and very helpful and some yeah. of those kinds of things. But my Reddit experience has just been a cesspool of word vomit that's out there. All right. That's a great name for a band, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Word Vomit. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm Dirt McNasty from Word Vomit. Uh, anyway, Lady Kezzy says. Did you say Dirt Mc... Dirt? Uh, dirt, dirt or Dirt? Uh, dirk would be good. Dirt would be good. Dirt McNasty. <laughs> it's my, dirt my McNasty. fake punk band. Um, I like that. Dirt yeah, McNasty. Uh, I like that. <laughs> I'm the cousin of... Uh, oh, who's the guy from the um, Sex Pistols? Johnny Rotten, Dirt McNasty, Roy. Um, all right, so Lady Kezzy says, tips on audience retention and growth. Well, this is everybody's favorite topic. Uh, my, po- my boyfriend's podcast has been having some retention issues. They post after every race based off of Formula One racing and make reels. They do TikTok content from the podcast, which some gain thousands of views on, I'm assuming one of those, uh, TikTok Uh, where they're really struggling is to turn those views into follows and grow the podcast in that way. What are some ways they can turn this into growth and really boost their podcast? And what was also interesting is there was somebody that had just started a podcast. I think they said they had a hundred thousand people on Instagram and they were excited because within the first 11 episodes they had, I want to say a hundred subscribers in Apple. And I was like, do the math on that. Like that's 0.000. So for me, I'm not saying that social doesn't work. I'm just saying it's a trickle when it works, if it works, because I I mean, the next time you go to Twitter, just kind of step out of yourself and kind of watch what you do there. I scroll down. I'm looking for people I know. Uh, An image might, a meme always catches my eye usually. Um, you know, and then I see what flame war is going on and, and then I leave, um, you know, same on Facebook, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on? I mean, on one hand, do it because a trickle is a trickle. It's still a step in the right direction. Um, but just getting people from one platform to another, do you have, cause obviously you, you know, you do your show, it goes to YouTube oh, yeah. and it's out as audio, but you know, getting somebody from one platform, YouTube, to listen to audio on insert, you know, Apple podcast, <laughs> Castomatic, whatever. That's kind of tough. I just watched the one nation under whiskey guys try to do this where they, they were 
they're doing two podcasts, two different podcasts, a long form and a short form. And they took the short form to YouTube exclusively uh, at the beginning of the year. I think it was the beginning of this year and kind of restructured it. So it would be YouTube friendly and started doing it there. And I thought about sending them a note because I don't want to listen to it on YouTube. Like I was right. like, no. And I, I never made it over. I didn't convert. And and I just was like, well, I guess I'm not going to listen to it. I kept having that like, wow, well, I really got to figure out a way to listen to this thing in the car. Now, I could do it today in the YouTube music app if it was there because they have that switch, that audio video switch you can use. But at the time, I didn't want to figure it out. So they lost me for a while. Guess what? They came back to <laughs> they came back to the podcast. They must have gotten so much negative feedback. Like, dudes, you can still do YouTube and put it in the podcast feed. This is where we originally found it. You know, so they didn't have any luck. I'm not saying that's one example. I I I think once you establish a channel, it's hard to move it because all everybody who's subscribed there, they don't want to go to the other place to find you. They right. found you there. Like you still have to. You still have to, it's just, it's maddening to me when I'm like, okay, we're going to do content exclusive over here because we want to grow our YouTube. YouTube. Well, move it over to YouTube, keep it in your podcast channel and grow both audiences. Here's a novel idea. That's really what you're doing <laughs> yeah. when you, when you start another thing and it's your phone. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you, Chris Nessie. He's letting me know that, uh, what you're hearing is just me. Well, no wonder people left. That's funny. Is Twitter we, blocking me. Twitter's blocking me. Yeah. That's well, the, <laughs> let me see here. Bluetooth is on. Yeah. The roadcaster disconnected. That's why people uh, left. That's, I wonder. See, this we, is why you, this is why Bluetooth is evil. Like, yeah. Uh, yes. Road. Um, <laughs> you know, you just can't, those are the kind of things that's like having a Bluetooth keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse or well, connecting. Like you just don't, it, it's never reliable. Well, the other thing is it used to blink on some apps. You could you could see the little microphone blinking so you could yeah. tell the audio was working. And so Jim is now listening in uh, um, Twitter spaces. But, yeah, this is why I normally don't fire up my phone. And, yeah, I yeah. miss the days when I have a cable here somewhere that if I wanted to, I can't now because I have a computer plugged into it, but I could plug it in. But this is where I really miss the TRRS cable. When they took that out of the roadcaster, I was right. like, that was a mistake. Um, so that's, that's a bummer. Um, the, in terms of social coach, Dave says, I like my social for frequently asked questions or basically he's there for, you know, it's a reconnaissance mission to see what people are talking about and then get fired up about in episode ideas. Yeah. That's, I hang out a lot in, Facebook, I hang out uh, a little on Twitter, um, Instagram maybe, but Instagram is is just more of Jennifer Aniston promoting skin products, uh, which I will watch all day. So, <laughs> you know, um, at least you're honest about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, so, you know, so it's <clears throat> it's kind of a weird thing, but just realize that when you have, you know, all these views on TikTok. Don't negate that because, you know, they're not on the platform you want. The question then is how, if the goal is monetization, how do you monetize TikTok? And I know they have ads because I've heard talk about how TikTok is kind of eating YouTube's lunch in terms of advertising. And a lot of the advertising dollars are going to TikTok. Um, I, that's for, you know, via Adam Curry on uh, the No Agenda show. So I haven't verified that, but, uh, you know, that's, that could be, uh, you know, another income stream if you got enough downloads. Speaking of verification, I did something yesterday that was, uh, kind of dumb and I fixed it this morning, but, um, I made a thing for Instagram and this is true. The Beatles before they were the Beatles, you know, they were still a struggling little band. Um, some guy took them to Hamburg in a not so great Hamburg, Germany in a not so great neighborhood and they played 12 hours a day, 48 days in a row. And somehow when I did the math, it came out to 3000 something, something hours. And, uh, it's not, it's 500 and something Alexa. What's 12 times 48. I can't do math live. It's never good. Uh, no 40. See, I hate her. Uh, <laughs> Alexa, what's 12 times 48. 
576. So 576 hours, a little different than 3,000. It's still a lot of hours. 500 it's still hours a lot of hours. hours. Oh. Yeah. So the, the whole thing was, you know, how do you grow your audience? Practice. And uh, which leads me, let's see. Nope, I didn't copy that one. There was a guy that is doing a, a D&D, right? Dungeon and Dragon show. And he said, should we record episode zero? And that was my answer. I'm like, look, the Beatles practiced 576 hours or how, whatever number Alexa said. Um, sorry to anyone who just said, you're triggering my device. Quit saying that. Uh, you know, record that first episode and then don't publish it. You know, use it for editing, figure out your gear, all that stuff. You should kind of practice before you go public. And uh, yeah, John Muntz is saying, yes, you're, you're triggering the, the first one. I actually just brought back the, uh, shall we call it, Lexi cast. I'll leave off an A there. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how many downloads I get because I haven't put out an episode on that show in like forever. But Amazon is now sending out a, a newsletter about the woman in the tube mm -hmm. and things you can do. And I was like, Oh, thank you for the free content. I'll turn this into a podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it dawned on me. There's nothing wrong with Podbean. There really isn't there. It's fine. They've been around forever. Their stats still kind of drive me nuts when I want to see how many downloads did I get on all my episodes. And it, it just dawned on me. I haven't recommended them to anyone in a very long time, unless you want to do a video podcast. I usually don't. And again, it's not that they're bad. They're okay. But I was like, so I uh, said, you know what? I could save myself 15 bucks a month here if I wasn't doing a show that I'm not doing. And so I moved it to Captivate, which lets you have as many shows as you want as long as you don't get popular. And I was like, well, this show is not popular. It hasn't had an episode out in forever. But uh, at any rate, so let's go to that was uh, thank you, Lady Kezi and the lovely people at Reddit. Uh, there are some people to, to Jim's point. Uh, the the R, I forget what it is, something podcasting on Reddit. Yeah, R slash podcasting is okay, but there are people over there that have, they will voice their opinion. That's the whole thing. So it's kind of like when you, when you ask for people to, you know, review your show, uh, you might want to uh, be careful with that. I'm actually going to end the Twitter space now that nobody's in it. <laughs> Can't, and, can't we stream to it? Can you, can't you use YouTube to stream or are they not streaming to spaces? I, that's a good question. I think that, I think they are. I they probably start. am then already and didn't realize it. Well, you'd have to, have, you'd have to have chosen it when you set up the, I set up uh, everything. I know I'm streaming to anything I can stream because I added mm -hmm. LinkedIn and we didn't use to stream to LinkedIn. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to, I don't know what's going on with that, but, uh, Road bring back the TRRS cable. So here's a fun, just a fun little story. So this is from John. He says, hey, Dave, doubt if you remember me, but we talked in the past. Uh, we, uh, we basically have left comments on David Hooper's page discussing Zoom products. Uh, he has a P8. Uh, I, I like the P8. I thought it was cool. I hate that the Zoom, I don't know if it's all Zoom products, but if you have multiple channels going, they split the file, I think, at 45 minutes when it hits a certain megabyte. They, they, so if you had eight tracks and then you went an hour and a half, they're like, here are another eight tracks for the second half of your show. And that was like, uh, no. So that, that's one of the things I like about the Roadcaster. But he says, I've always been impressed with you know the P8 as a piece of equipment. I've always enjoyed it. Uh, one reason I do love Zoom products is the customer support uh, on the school of podcasting one week, you guys were discussing the zoom H four and the way the dark gray material becomes extremely sticky. And I think it was, mm -hmm. it might've been Randy that shipped it back and they cleaned it and gave him that. Well, this, he said, I followed the hint from one of your listeners and contacted zoom about this. And within 10 days uh, I had returned my H four N and today received a brand new one uh, an H four N pro in the box so they wow. gave him a new one wow um i was just writing this note to you today to let you know about the easy for me to say about the success of that from one of your listeners uh advice and maybe uh look at the p8 as a less flashy procaster well then now there's a mackie one that came out um the i forget the dlz something something and at first i was kind of like 
blah, you know, it's too big. It's bigger than the Rodecaster, but it has like a 10 inch screen on it. So if you're struggling to read the screen on the Rodecaster, eh, this may be the one for you. Um, but uh, John says, keep up the good work and I'll be buying you a coffee or two later today, which is nice. Thank you very much. Uh, if you scan the uh, little scan me thing, if you're watching the video, that'll take you right over there. And of course there's super cash and all the other things here on YouTube. Um, but he goes, you, uh, this was a way of uh, saving my $200 piece of equipment. So John uh, Vivian, the two, uh, the second uh, from no driving gloves.com. So there you go. So if you got a sticky zoom product, you know, that doesn't Stickiness mean Stickiness is gross too. It's oh, it gross. Is. Yeah. Like you touch it and you're like, because yeah. you kind of yeah. want to go, what is that? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It and, happens and... on mice sometimes too on the ends. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. And then you you hold on to it. One day you grab the, the, the mouse and you're like, yo, what, what's, what happened? And that's, it's just bad material. Yeah. Uh, Craig says, thanks for the heads up. I've got a sticky H6. You, you would think like, I don't get that on the zoom p4 but i probably would if i hit i guess maybe it's the fact that i don't handle this a lot it's you, probably handling it's probably that that uh, the human oil and the yeah. you know the the goop we you know uh, uh, and then that's it you know that kind of thing yeah sorry so in general just chicken don't lick nuggets. your equipment if you're is, is what you're saying so don't eat chicken nuggets <laughs> and then grab well i shouldn't say that <laughs> i uh <laughs> I forget what comedian it was that said you could put chicken nuggets in front of a chicken and they'd be like, yeah, I'll eat those. Cause it's really not chicken. <laughs> it's like, I got no problem with that. Um, so I was like, all right. Uh, if you have a question, by the way, if you're watching in the chat room, feel free to uh, throw it there or you can do like jam and did earlier and just go to ask the podcast coach.com slash question. And uh, that will jump you uh, right in here. Uh, video is optional, but we, if, if we don't know you, we might do a little vetting to make sure you're not trying to crank us those crazy cranky people that love to, uh, to do that. So, uh, keep that in mind. So, um, here's a fun one. Uh, it's always kind of an interesting when you see somebody go, what should my podcast be about? Cause there's a part of me that goes, yeah, don't buy a microphone yet. If you really can't figure that out, but this person says, it's more than just another niche question. He says, so I've hosted a few podcasts over the years. I've typically got to around 12 episodes before growing frustrated with co-hosts or guests or being overwhelmed with my day job. So one way to fix that, go solo. Then there's no co-hosts and there's no guests. But I, I told him that and he was like, yeah. He just, he's kind of a, uh, he's in camp gym. Like I need a co-host. I need a guest. I need something. I just don't want to do a solo show. And that's perfectly fine. Um, he says, I really love interviewing people and would say I'm okay at it. So, all right. So that sounds good. I've done a lot in my day job over the years with some incredibly high profile people. Podcasting with a front or two always sounds great in my head, but the reality is uh, it's a logistics nightmare. Yes, it is. And if you want to have fun, try doing a show with three people that uh, when uh, Eric and I try to do the podcast review show, it takes us weeks to figure out when we can get together with our guests to, to talk about their show. He says, I also feel like I'm the only one trying to come up with content. Um, I have before I worked at Libsyn. Um, no, nope, even like even to my I think the last time I did this was the. I did a newsletter for my first job out of college, but I was always like, we should start a newsletter. This is before it sounds really bad. This is like before email and stuff. Um, and people like, that's a great idea. And the first episode, the first newsletter would be great. Everybody chimed in. And by the third issue, nobody was, it was down to the Dave Jackson newsletter. Did you read Dave's thing? Um, so get ready for that. So when you feel like I'm the only one coming up with content, it's because you're the only one coming up with content. Um, I never know how to grow an audience. And whilst I don't have huge ambitions, I don't want to talk to myself either. That's when I kind of go, when you first start off, you kind of got to be good with talking to yourself. Uh, a friend has talked about us starting one together. And I honestly think it could be good. I always think this through and then fall into the same pattern, uh, which again is 12 episodes and he's out. I want this time to be different. 
So reading this back, it sounds like an abusive relationship. It's really not that bad. I just want to learn lessons. My questions then are, so Jim, are you, are you ready for the question? Um, how do I find a niche I won't get bored with? That's a fun one. Yeah. Because I, I know yeah. I did a show called the S customer service show. Cause that was at the time I was in customer service and I did seven episodes, I think, and quit. Cause it mm -hmm. was like, Oh, that's my job. Not my passion. Um, well, if you think you're, you, there's a, there's a topic out there that is unexhaustible. Is that, is that a right word? Inexhaustible. It, it there is, isn't. Um, Eventually you say everything there is to say yeah. about that. We're, listen, we're in that camp right now. There isn't anything we say on a week to week basis. Every once in a while that, that isn't, you know, that isn't original. Every once in a while, something new comes out or we get a new problem or Google releases something new. I mean, so there is, there is a just trickle of new content, but I mean, if you go, if you, if you stay around long enough, you've heard all the things that we're going to say. Yeah. And then you've said everything that, you know, it, it, you just have to recycle it. If you're going to continue to do it week in and week out or month in or month out or whatever you decide to do eventually you're going to have to be okay with recycling your own saying, saying it again, by the way, people are okay with that. That's why they're listening to you. They want their own bias confirmed in a lot of ways. And that's not a bad thing. It's they're listening to you because they agree with you. Or in some cases they don't agree with you, but they like listening to you because they like yelling at you when you're not there. Right. <laughs> they, they, it's crazy why people listen, but they do. So I think, you know, every topic runs out of content at, at some point in time, it's just, when are you going to run out of content? I think for, if you look at a lot of podcasters, who have gone maybe six or seven or eight years in that realm. The, the, there's nothing new, nothing original, but they do it because they love the, they love the podcasting part. They know they're repeating themselves. It just, it just happens. You just, you got to get good with it. Yeah. That's something it's taken me a while to get comfortable with. Cause yeah. like with the school of yeah. podcasting, I'm, I think yeah. I'm at 881 and there are times I'm like, I think I've already talked about this and I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? That was back in episode 357 and yeah. nobody's digging into my catalog to no. find that. They and, don't remember. You don't remember. You yeah. barely remember what you said. Things might've changed a little yeah. bit yeah. and guess what? You have new listeners. Just say it again. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Craig says, if you can't brainstorm a list of 20 ideas for the first 20 episodes, you may not have picked the right topic. I, I agree with that. At, at least 10. Holy cow. But you should be just, and also be ready to talk about it for free. You know, um, ooh, we have a, a but here. Although I get Jim's point for some topics, there are always new perspectives to take and new ideas to connect. That's why philosophers have been going strong for you. They're all saying the same thing over <laughs> and over and over, right? For every season, you know, turn, turn, right. That was, that was, yeah. so, that was Solomon's philosophy. Right. So yeah, no, I, and I, I get it, but eventually you find the end of the internet and yeah. there isn't anything that new. It's just a derivative of something else. Yeah. Right. Um, coach Dave says blind men in the elephant parable, right. Where the, the blind guy comes over and touches the elephant. Sometimes it can be good and useful to look at something from a different perspective. Yeah. As long as it doesn't get you canceled. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> well, what do you mean you think David Lee Roth is the best singer in Van Halen? That's it. You need, I want your job. Uh, yeah, that's always kind of fun. But um, it's, uh, so that was his first question. How do I identify people to work with who won't flake out after three months? And my advice on this one, when you get married, yes, you're totally in love with your partner. But look past the partner and look at the family because when you marry someone you're marrying the family and if the family is um bsc right if, if you know what I mean? if they're a little wacky um then you know have fun because when you marry that person you you marry the family so if you are single with no spouse and no kids and your co-host has too many vans, five kids, soccer practice, and two jobs. That could be an issue because when you say, Hey, it's Thursday, come on, it's time to do the podcast. And their spouse is like, but little Janie is got a fever. 
that could be an issue. So find somebody who's got the same passion. Uh, and then again, maybe do a couple practice episodes. I don't know. Well, how, how do you, cause I know Jim, you're, you're kind of in that boat now where you're trying to find guests all the time and things like that. Yeah. Well, and how do you find a co-host? I love that question. That won't flake out after, yeah. after three episodes or three months or whatever it is. Um, you got to give, give them some incentive to be there. If if it's your show and you want them to be there, you've got to find a way to incent them. Nobody will just do it. Sometimes they'll do it out of the goodness of their heart for a while, but you got to give them some incentive to be there. In our case, like you don't do it financially. You're just my friend and you continue to be my friend. And we have conversations before and after the show. Yeah. You've shown me that at times if I, if you'll talk to me outside of the show, you're my friend, right? That's yeah. incentive enough, right? Sometimes I think what podcast groups are missing is that friendship. They, they think it's just a transaction. Hey, come on. We're going to, if, if you think you're going to hang out with this person for an hour or two, one time a week, and that's going to be enough, it's probably not, right? It's probably not enough. Back to the comment you made earlier, if you're going to have those kinds of uh, podcast where it's going to be weekly with a, with a co-host, you have to nail down a time and you have to be consistent enough that that time gets rooted in people's schedules. I know my family knows my world knows Saturday mornings, nine 30, my place is here. Yeah. That's where I belong. Sarah asked me every Friday, my wife's name is Sarah. Mm -hmm. She asked me every Friday podcasting tomorrow. And I always say, of course, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just, it's locked in. Right. So Getting that locked in, I've lost hosts, guest hosts from their schedule just gets too busy or they can't yeah. make that time anymore. It just doesn't work for them. So I think the number one advice I would give on this is if you want your co-host to stay around for a while, be their friend, <laughs> give them some reason or pay them in some form or fashion. It doesn't have to be money, but you've got to do some things where it's in their best interest to keep showing up because most people don't do things for just charity very long. They, right. they, they eventually they're like, all right, I'm out of here. And I think that's where people miss it is they, and this is where I've missed it. I'm only speaking from experience. You got to give them a reason to be there. Yeah. It's, it's tricky. And you know, one of the things is just, you know, life changes. You might have somebody that's perfect. And uh, when I did the podcast for musicians, I was talking with a phenomenal piano player and I was talking about how she chose her band. And she said, um, that they basically hang out a day with each person they interviewed to be a guitar player. She's like, because in the end, if I have a guitar player that's better at playing the guitar, but horrible at just hanging with this person, she goes, I'll go with the lesser talented person, but the better hang, because in the end, I'm spending seven hours in a bus with this person. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm being told that my video is less, oops, uh, less crisp than Jim's. It is a little weird. I noticed my glasses are kind of weird. So um not sure what's going on. But it's your that. bandwidth today. You've had a few skip skippy times. Mm, I need so. time to reboot the Mac. Probably. Uh, probably. That, that could or, be a, or check your router. Check your modem. That you could know. be. Yeah. Um we had a question Jay had asked, and I know you put a link in the show notes. Can you yep. talk about super chats and how to set them up? I know I think they're available on this show. I don't know. Yeah, I know we've gotten, I, we've gotten, I, we've, we've gotten them in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do know that when I saw how much Google took, there was a part of me that went, oh, "What?" <laughs> it's it was a, it's pretty a, steep, a, pretty steep. Yeah. Hence why I have the "Buy Me a Coffee" scan me button in the upper right hand corner of the video, or you can go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. Uh, is, is that um, Lane uh, is being very nice right now. Um, before we move off of the gym, any, any thoughts yeah. on super yeah, yeah. chats? Just a couple things. There's YouTube requirements for it. So oh. your channel has to be monetized. That kind of makes sense, right? They're using that monetization engine in the background to be able to get money to you that for them to take their fee from you before you get it. So right. there's that you have to be over 18. Uh, you have to be available in a certain number of locations. And there's a list in that link I sent. There's an eligibility requirements section that'll take you to it. And then you can view the available locations that, that are there. Um, so they can't be the, the super chat and super chat stickers aren't available in the following types of videos. So like age restricted videos, unlisted videos, 
mm. private videos. That kind of makes sense. If yeah. you can't find it, it you, you can't get it. And then this is one, it's made for kids. And this is really where people think they, they don't think about what that check mark is and they check it. They say, oh no, my content is safe for kids. That's not what that means. What that mm. means is you're making content specifically for children. They judge you on YouTube more strictly if you check that box than if you don't. So mm. if you're like you and I, we'd be like, oh yeah, that kid would be okay if kids listen well, except for two weeks ago. Yeah. But <laughs> we'd be like, it's okay if kids, we don't swear for the most part. Right. And, but that's not what that check mark means. It means you're specifically making content for children. So then, so uh, uh, once you've met that criteria, you can go in and set that super chat up on your account and uh, and get that going. I thought there was like a numbers requirement to yeah, you have to have so many hours something along to be monetized. I don't yeah. see that. I don't see that in the eligibility requirements now. So maybe that changed, but that uh, uh, Jay dig in a little bit on that. And that's not hard to set up if your channel's um, eligible for it. Not, um, not hard at all. What I don't know is I'm assuming on YouTube somewhere down by you is a link, like a little heart or something for people to click on if they wanted to send a super chat. I don't know that I've never really dug into it. I don't know that I could put a link. You know, I would just, if I'm going to put a link, I'm going buy me a coffee. Although the thing about buy me a coffee is, you are putting a limit to us. Well, not really. Somebody could buy you. I, I listened to uh, a show from a member of the school of podcasting and somebody bought them 14 cups of coffee. And I was like, Oh, all right, that'll work. So, uh, you know, but it's, you know, again, don't limit the way if people want to give you money, if they want to send you, you know, whatever Venmo or yeah, whatever, you know, a, a barrel full of pennies, I'll take them. You know what I mean? Um, For sure. Yeah. Uh, Jay, jump into your YouTube studio and go to the earning section. It's go on the left-hand side, drop down. There's, there's, it says earn. And in there, there's setups for all the different way, watch pays ads, memberships, shopping, short feed ads, and supers is what you're looking for. And then that's, if you haven't set it up yet, there'll be a blue button that says get started. And if you have, it says view. So you can pop in there and take a look at it it's in your youtube studio almost everything now is in youtube studio YouTube studio yeah. Yeah. yeah the i guess the thing is because i don't watch that many people that do live stuff because i i watch rick beato he's got a really great music channel and people just send him super chats i've never seen him ask for them yeah and but once somebody sends you one then somebody else will click it and somebody else will click it and then you get that money through your google adwords so you have to have a Google AdWords. At least that's Ad, where I get it. AdSense. AdSense. A Google Thank AdSense you. account. Yeah. 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 So, uh, oh, here's a fun. Uh, uh, Michael Ray digging into uh, the weeds here. Um, uh, we almost, hold on. Let's uh, let's see if I can find it. Yes. And now, oh, he's been waiting for this. It's time for Jim to get his nerd on. We'll take a uh, slight tangent from podcasting and walk into the lovely world of domains. Uh, what's the difference uh, DNS records oh. versus a records versus a C name? This is my Achilles heel. I yeah. really last night when I was setting up the domain alexacast.com, I had to go into my uh, GoDaddy and I literally, this is what always happens. I, I looked in this case, I looked for anything that said Podbean and deleted it. And then I just said record a, and then they had some sort of IP address. And then I did another one was a record www IP address and hit save and was like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. Numbers and stuff hit save. And then I woke up and it was working and I have no idea what they did. So that's one of those things. I kind of just go, all right, this is what the screenshot usually, because I don't think anybody gets domains. So I just do what's in the screenshot and then pray. And it typically, <laughs> and then it typically works. I don't know. Yeah. Do you? Do it's you? It's been a long time since I've set up one of these. Usually, your host provider takes care of you on this yeah. one. Right? Yeah, they they are. And so an A record maps a host name to one or more uh, IP addresses. So your host name, uh, it, it, that that host name, it's the connection between the host name and the IP address. While the C name record maps host name to another host name. So those they're used for very specific reasons. And, and I would consult in this case, 
depending on what you're trying to do, your, your, your host provider is probably giving you C panel access, which is a huge mistake <laughs> because there's a lot of things you can do wrong in your C panel and just wipe out your hosting. Generally, if you go to GoDaddy or stuff like that, you get that. You, you, that's why I like Maple Grove Partners. Christian takes care of all that stuff yeah. for you on that. And yeah, Hover would be another. Yeah, they get, if you've bought the hosting through Hover, I, 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 I didn't know they were providing that. But yeah, I would go to the host provider and they'll have set up instructions for what you're trying to do uh, on that. So probably not the best for us to try to troubleshoot that live. Oh, yeah. your, that hover should have some stuff for it support to contact well, to say, hey, what am I trying it, to do here? And the other thing is, it may resolve your domain in 20 minutes, and it very likely may take 48 hours. So it's one of those where you put it in, you match the screenshot, you hit save, then you pray, and then you wake up the next day and hopefully it's working. If it doesn't, then I will just call GoDaddy, in my case, uh, or cooler websites or Namecheap or whoever you're using and say, okay, you know, I feel again, like I'm in, uh, in London where I just kind of go, is this right? I don't know how many pence is a, you know, so you just kind of go, this is what I put in there. And that's where they usually go. Oh, you stupid idiot. You know, you can't have 12 C records and they go to town on it. So, uh, that's, that's a, that's like I say, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I know at Libsyn when somebody's like, I'm trying to set up a custom domain. I, I, you know, there are parts of me that just kind of shrink up a little bit and I'm like, uh, so, um, yeah, kind of tricky. Uh, but we did get some kind words from, uh, Lane who says, I don't really have a question right now, but just wanted to say thanks for all the help. I launched my podcast a couple of weeks ago. There we go. That's, uh, do I not have an applause? There we go. Nope. That is not applause. That is a, that's a bad porn music. So we give you bad porn music for, uh, you know, uh, geez, I do that's you horrible. Know. I thought I had, that is, that is just horrible. I'm looking, I have, I swear. There it is there. I, it's an, I'm like, I know it's the orange button. I launched my podcast a couple weeks ago, lots of room for employment, but you started, that's the key. So many people, I have somebody in a Facebook group, um, and Jim, can you fix that? I just unstarted. What'd you, oh, and which so one? now the uh, lanes. You want me to hide it? There we go. Yeah, because okay. I lost the ability to do that yeah. when I unstarted. But I saw somebody at Facebook and they were like, I've been thinking about this for two years. And there is a part of me that, yes, I want to be compassionate and say, come on, you can do it, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then there's another part of me that goes, oh, come on. Uh, and so I just said, look, you're either going to end up with a really good podcast or a really good story about the time you started a podcast, but you can't, you can't improve what you don't launch. So Lane, congrats on starting because a lot of people, I, you know, and I'm and no shade on that. You know, we all have our own little demons and things that we have to overcome and to get uh, enough courage to press record and then more courage to put it out there. So I get it, but it, it just, you know, in the immortal words of Ryan K. Parker, no one will punch you in, in the face. Now, Ryan needs to show up today. He would be That's another it. one we haven't seen in a while. <laughs> Ryan, are you out there? Are you Ryan, us the, out there? Get, if we could if we could get Bang's Naughty Bits to show up, he's uh, never coming back. He's never, he's coming, never back. coming back. Yeah, he was banned. Well, he wasn't banned, but we kicked him out because he kept wanting to talk deep politics on a show about yeah, well, not, appro not, not appropriate for this show generally no, <laughs> like, no, no. we miss him he always had some interesting things about publicity and things like that yeah, yeah. um yeah we'll hit this and then we'll thank our awesome supporters coach dave says hey best books or audios about good interviewing questions hmm techniques and formats can't get enough of those um if you go to podcast talent coach Somewhere on that website, he has a list of good questions. I know Eric has that. Um, I've read a few books on doing interviews, and I have yet to find one that I would recommend. They're they're all, I don't know what they're about. That's the whole thing. I'm kind of like, you know, give me a how-to, and it's just how interviews can help you get great stories out of people. I'm like, yeah, that's why I bought the book. Now, how do I do that? Uh, so formats my new favorite format that i like is narrative style like i like to take an interview and i go through and i will uh take each question 
an answer and decide, okay, is this good? And then in Hindenburg, I throw them on the right-hand side, and then I basically will stitch the questions and answers together. And if there's ever a spot, trying to kind of make a story arc in a way, um, or at least get the, the interesting things up front. And then if there's something where these two question and answers don't really fit, that's where I come in and put some sort of narrative to, to tie the two together. So it just flows together. Um, I did have a member of the school of podcasting that just joined and their stuff. And again, this isn't wrong, but when I showed them, Hey, try this. There we go. And we have a super chat. Yay. Thank you very much. Coach Dave. Um, <laughs> the, um, but they had very much, here's their intro stop. Then they played some music and then they introduced the show and explained what it was. And then they did, then that stopped. And then they started the show. And I said, you've got some music here at the beginning of each of these segments. And so I said, Hey, instead of having tease music starts, voiceover starts, why not take that music and fade it in under the first voice part? And so they tried that and they're like, it's, it sounds kind of silly, but it's just like nothing stopped. It was just like, hey, do you know about axes and sharpening knives and blah, blah? Here comes the music and, 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 and on today's show. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, welcome to the um, prepping. Oh, something prepping.info. Um, yada, yada, yada. And then when they were done introducing the show, then they just it just it was all these nice transitions. So sometimes the format of the show can be boosted by just, you know, uh, I, I love when I hear a good tease before an advertisement. They'll be like, so how do you make money with a peanut butter knife? You know, uh, that coming up right after this, you know, or something like that. So, um, Jim, what are your thoughts on on formats uh, or just in general? You know, any yeah. books that you really like? My favorite book. I don't read books. Oh, yeah. but I, I don't read them. I, I mean, I, I read your book every week. Right. <laughs> Let's I've, just be clear. I, I seriously <laughs> bought this book. Yeah, because there's no highlighting in it. The highlighting in it is in the Kindle version, mm -hmm. and I seriously bought this book so I could hold it up. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it. It's like because I like, oh, it's story worthy. Blah blah blah. Uh, I like um, "Will It Fly" by Pat Flynn. Even though it's not a podcasting book, it's about starting a small business. But a lot of that applies to uh, to that platform. That's an old school one by Michael Hyatt that basically just says make wow content. I'm trying to think what other books I'm reading right now, listenable by Peter Weiss, something listenable though. He's a, a radio guru in Atlanta. And I like the book because he says what I think. So it's kind of one of those where you're the whole time you're like, yes, preach brother. Yes, that's good. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Jim, any favorite business books? That you go. Well, well, we publish, I, you know, I work for Gallup. There Just you go. Full disclosure. And we publish a ton of business books. Um, no, I'm kind I'm kind of a more, I mean, I, because I love my audio content, I'm more listening. I try to listen to the folks that I like to imitate or I like to, yeah. to, to learn from. And so more of those, and then short oh, yeah. article content, uh, uh, you know, getting, uh, I like to, you know, actually have conversations with people and have the, and, and talk to folks. I could, I go back and critique my own style just to make sure like, Oh, I really could have done that better. I could have done this or tried that or I'll oh, hear, I'll hear somebody do something. And you're like, Ooh, like how yeah. do I add that into my repertoire of things that I'm doing? So yeah. Yeah. Do. DR brought up a good one. I was like, yes, how did I forget this big podcast by David mm -hmm. Hooper? It's mm -hmm. a great book and a great weapon. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's a, is it heavy? It's thick. It's, it's thick. It's is really it the Bible thick. of podcasting? It's, it's up there. And then a uh, hundred podcast templates from David Hooper. And then of course, if you want to make money, there's the old, uh, Profit from your podcast links in the show notes out at uh, askthepodcastcoach.com slash four three. Is that, is that a new book that you've written, Dave? I haven't seen that in a while. No, that, but oh. it uh, it's uh, published. It's still relevant, though. I'm I'm happy that it's uh, standing up. What is the publishing would, date? On this? Would you have the rights? Do you own the rights to that, or did you? I else? I own a hundred percent rights okay. to so, the audio book. I do not own. Oh. I think I own. Yeah, they I forget what oh. percentage of but yeah, I can't just do whatever I want with this. That's okay. That's my good friends at Skyhorse Publishing uh that do that. But we went through did I ever tell you the negotiations? Yeah, I I said uh they gave me a, a thing and I was like, okay, that's good. I said, but there's one thing. I I want a hundred percent 
uh, of the audio rights. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we don't do that. And they're like, but let me see if I can bump these up a bit. We go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth each time saying, yeah, we, we can't do that, but we can. And I finally said, okay, well, you know, I really appreciate the offer because I am in the middle of writing the, this book anyway. And uh, I said, I, I don't mean to sound like an egomaniac, but um, I don't need you. Like I have a platform and I realize in the end, you guys aren't going to do really much to promote me, uh, yada, yada, yada. And they then came back and said, yeah, okay, we'll give you 100%, which is good because when I found out how, if you think Google takes a lot, Hofa does Audible. Audible's like, and here's your crumb. It's really bad. Yeah. So I'm I, when I get this recorded, eventually, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to release it on a private platform where I can get the money, uh, and then once my super fans have bought it, I'm going to put it on Audible. But I'm like, holy cow! It was it's a, it's like seventy percent they take and you get 30 and i was like bite my butt amazon holy cow so i have i have real imposter syndrome about writing a book i've had people ask me that i've come out publicly and said no i just got asked that this week one of my coworkers was like you ever thought about writing a book i'm like no not ever not gonna but i have real imposter syndrome like my my question to myself is always who would read my gibberish like i would what well no i know but like <laughs> that's the that's the inner that's the inner imposter syndrome for me. I have no problem getting on and speaking gibberish. And I, listen, I know th- to save the comments for a second here. I know I can speak and get it transcribed. Right. I know, I know I can do all those things, but I just, I have this weird about writing something where I'm just like, who wants to read that garbage? So nah. it's, it's a real thing. I mean, it's in, yeah. imposter syndrome is I, a real, real thing. For sure. I will say it's, it's a very cool feeling, even if nobody buys it, when you go to Amazon and you see your book, yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool, the thing that really yeah. got cool is Michael uh, O'Neill from the solopreneur went into a FedEx Kinko's and there in the bookshelf was my, like you walked in and there was my book. And I was like, wow. Oh, maybe Skyhorse publishing isn't uh maybe they are actually promoting my book. A little bit. Well, they are motivated. They own, yeah. right. Yeah. They, so own they, it, they yeah. are motivated. People just don't write books and bury them. You know, they do, publishers do want to get that in places. That's just, there's a only certain number of places books can be sold. And, and so I, yeah, it's, there's so much, the book space is so complicated. Well, you know, I just don't want to do it. It's hard, it's hard work. Well, but thinking of that, so many people go, why should I start a podcast? There are so many podcasts every year, more books no, are right put on, out, no, you know? Right so, right um, but the fun thing about a book is much, very much like a podcast you think the hard part is writing the book and it's, it's not easy, but once you get started, it's not that bad. All you do is you're like, here is the topic podcast monetization. And then like, what are my chapters, mm-hmm. which I don't remember cause it's mm-hmm. been two years. Um, and it's like, Oh, um, the power of podcasting. So what's the benefits um, getting an audience presenting presentation is queen. Um, and then finally chapter four, how to make money with your podcast. So, and then chapter five, selling your products, Chapter six, sponsorship. Chapter has a lot of things in there for sponsorship. Chapter seven, affiliate marketing. Chapter eight, crowdfunding. Chapter nine, live events. Chapter 10, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just basically take the chapter and break it down into that. And then that breaks into a paragraph, which breaks down to a sentence. And the next thing you know, you got a book. But the fun part is uh, writing the book's not the hard part. Getting people to read it yeah. is the hard part. It's like just because I'm in Amazon does not, you know, and I was even. I was a number one new release in blogging. There you oh, go. So oh, I'm, a, I'm a, oh. an Amazon top seller. Uh, <laughs> For Wednesday, June 3rd. <laughs> right. In the blogging category. <laughs> so when you see somebody say Amazon bestseller, yeah, that's that's a bunch of crap. So well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so keep that in mind. Lane, we're going to answer your question right after we say thank you to our awesome supporters. Now, Jim, how do we... I want to have us over here. Oh, oh there, there we you go. go. There Very you go. good. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you can be an awesome supporter by going over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome. Uh, and if you want to start a podcast, 
you can do that by simply going over and I got to do, are you hearing a little tit -tit -tit every now and yeah, then? That, we, we've been getting your system. I would, I meant to tell you earlier, but I haven't heard one in a while. So. Yeah. I'm like, I need to pause my notifications. I'm like, oh, that's slack on my PC. And I was like, Oh, hold on. Or I could just do that. Okay. If you'd like to start a podcast or if you need help growing your podcast right now, I'm getting people that have a podcast and they want to grow it. And it's just proof again. And I'm guilty of this as well. You're too close to the trees to see the forest. You really are. There are times when I'm like, wait, why are you doing that? And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah. So schoolofpodcasting.com. Uh, and then our spotlight supporter of the week is the lovely ladies over at Keep the Flame Alive. If you love the Olympics, they have some really cool guests over there. If you're into sports and stuff, flamealivepod.com. Thanks so much for being an awesome supporter. We deeply appreciate that. Uh, ask the podcast coach runs on pod page. If you want to try pod page, we'll just go to try podpage.com. You can make your website in about 10 minutes. And that is not like a BS marketing line. Um, Zeta Christian is 70 something years old. And she, uh, she's a member of the school of podcasting. And she's like, can you kind of, can we get on zoom and you walk me through this? And we literally in 10 minutes. And she was like, wow, I can't believe how easy this is. So, very cool. And if you want more Jim Collison, and who doesn't, uh, go over and check out Home Gadget Geeks at TheAverageGuy.tv. And uh, we're still on the journey to, at this point, we're on the journey to 50. I think we have 32 patrons, something like that. Um, so help us. Uh, help get us over go. there and get signed up. That's Jeez. it. <laughs> I, I want to stop talking about this. So get over there. <laughs> It's help, help me help you. No, and help, I, I, uh, and you know what I meant. <laughs> for the record, I'm stealing this idea from Jen Briney. They did a thing where they were, they were trying to get over a thousand. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to 50 at this point, but we'll say a hundred cause it's a nice number. Uh, so ask the podcast coach.com slash awesome. And well, I know we, we hit 50. I will join you for a special <laughs> meeting <laughs> gathering of us together to do whatever. Yes, so, I will. Yeah. I will fly to. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. We're going to do it virtually because not everybody's going to get together. But, there you go. <laughs> but uh, we'll 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 at fifty. We'll get everybody together for some kind of special event. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. They were talking about books. We're having like a book club today. I love this. Um. Yeah. Here we go. Uh. If you um, you know, it's the algorithm, of course. But apparently on Amazon, it shows frequently bought together two David Hooper books and Dave Jackson's book. There you go. So, again, I, uh, you know, I don't view those guys as, yes, they're competition, but, you know, who else can I geek out about podcasting with? And uh, DR says that she only does downloads for books and magazines now. Check out Hoopla Digital, hoopladigital.com. If you have a library card, and for the love of God, why don't you have a library card? I always forget how cool the library is. You can get digital books for free. Like, you know, you, you basically check them out. And I'm surprised. A lot of times I will go to buy a book on Audible and I'm like, hold on. Let me check Hoopla Digital and your, there will be the book. Your library card, too, will get you sometimes your library. Your local library has free free books that you can download through their app. I forget the name of that app now. Uh, well, it used to be Libby. Yeah, I think it is Libby. Yeah, and I think, I think Libby, yeah, there was something, there was Libby and something else, and they they merged the two. So I should just show my library card number now. Everybody's going to try That's and it. check out books on my <laughs> library card. And Jim, this, there's a book that was checked out in June of 23. It's, uh, you know, yikes. August of 35. Well, you, you owe us a lot of money on this, Mr. Collison. Well, you're going to have to come to Bellevue to get it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, so speaking of good books, Lane says, are there good podcasts? Deal the Show is a great podcast on public speaking i forget that guy's name because he's also has a book about fill your calendar or something like that so there has to be a good one on interviewing that's a really good question i mean um we've talked about it there is a uh i did an episode on the school of podcasting on how to do interviews and how to be interviewed um it's like the ultimate guide to doing or interviews and such and such and then i made a lead magnet and I'm behind the scenes trying to see if I can find my own uh, thing. But it's I don't know that there's one strictly on, um, you know, interviews. Yeah, here's one. It was episode number, links in the show notes again, at askthepodcastcoach.439. 
Um, this was episode uh, back in, man, it seems like it was last week. Back in August of 2019, episode 677, The Ultimate Guide to Hosting and Guesting uh, Podcast Interviews. And this is the, this is the interesting thing because we I get a lot of questions about this all the time. And so I'm going to guess, uh, I don't know if it's on my website, but this is the longest episode I've ever done. Um, it doesn't show how long it is. Okay, it's an hour and 38 minutes. That's the longest episode I've ever done ever for the School of Podcasting. And I didn't have a single person complain about it being too long. And people say they had to listen to it in, in uh, you know, shifts basically to get through it. But I just did a brain dump. And it was like, okay, here we go. You know, I could have split that into two. One week, how to be an interviewer. And another one about how to be an interviewee. But I don't know. I'll have to look and see if there's any podcasts or books about interviews. Uh, Jim, what would be your, you know, you've done a lot of interviews. So what's your, you know, what's your top advice for somebody doing an interview? Um, don't study the individual too much, but you can't have zero. <laughs> so you, you need to find a spot where you're comfortable with it. Learn their name. <laughs> this is oh man. This is like this has been a hard lesson for me, and I do not know why I continue to stumble over it. Learn their name. Learn how they pronounce it, and it's okay to ask them. Like, hey, I know it's spelled. I know it's spelled this way, but how do you pronounce it? And then practice it <laughs> with them, saying, "Am I saying it right?" Right. Those are the there's nothing worse than getting somebody's name right or only using their first name when you get it and you punt because you're like, hey, I'm here with Dave and Dave and you know everybody's gracious, but they know, you know, they're like, yeah, this guy doesn't even know my last name. So and it's OK if you don't know a lot about them. I think for most folks, that's what the interview process is, is there for is to pull some things out of them, get some questions. Be curious. And I, this is one of the things I try to do all the time. Be curious on the follow up question. Don't be too fancy with it. There were some, there were some moments in, you know, maybe six or seven years ago where I would try to get super philosophical on the question. And they're like, nobody's Jim, if you're taking too long, just get, <laughs> get to the point, right? Get to the point. The other, the other mistake I think folks make is they try to answer the question for the guest before the guest even gets the opportunity to answer the question. Like I, so like, I know in 19, you know, in 1978, you were part of the congressional investigation to do that. Like, no, no, let your guests say those things. Yeah. Have some great questions ready uh, for them to pull that stuff out. And then last one, and I know this seems counterintuitive, but do not be afraid to interrupt your guest. If it's going oh, yeah. too long or they've gone off topic, find a moment where they're breathing and say, you know, sorry to interrupt, but, but let me, Let's bring this back to this because this was this part was super interesting to bring it back. So don't let the don't let the guest run 15 minutes, you know, unless they're really good. I've I, I have a guest host that at Gallup who can go 15 minutes and he's super interesting. And you just sit back and let them let roll. Him go. Yeah. yeah. Sure. If you um the last episode of the podcast review show at podcast review show dot com, uh, Dr. Brad Miller was on and he had Cliff Ravenscraft. And Cliff's a nice guy. Uh, Cliff knows his story. And if you, you know, if you pull his string, you're going to hear his full story. Yeah. There is no short version of Cliff's story. And he just let him go. And he ended up turning it into three episodes. And I was like, yeah, I would have. And again, if we go back to the book Story Worthy, figure out where the transformation is and go back as little as possible because you want to get to the good stuff to uh to do that but it's it's tricky but yeah like jim says in some cases you're like hold on before i forget this i gotta ask this now okay. and then my favorite was i was uh being interviewed by deidre from uh cap show and we both had kind of taken a tangent and she said you know that's really thoughtful especially when it comes to who should be doing this and it was a very polite way of saying hey we're over here remember the question was about this and it was so cool because it was just a polite like uh, passive aggressive way of saying remember we're talking about podcasting and it was so cool to do that so sometimes you can you can kind of do that or just say wow that's fascinating back to podcasting or back yeah, to yeah. you know back to coaching soccer it's just a polite way of saying hey we're over here we're here to talk about that so there are all sorts of fun ways and then uh if you can't get somebody under control there's this thing called editing 
it's really, really helpful. And you just cut out the stuff that uh, doesn't work. But for me, I mean, every a, a good podcast for me is one that makes me laugh, cry, think, groan, educate, or entertain. And if it doesn't, then um, I don't. I'm, I'm not as uh, patient. I, I, in fact, I there was a couple of shows this morning that I was like, you know what? I keep getting your episodes, and I keep every week just swipe left, and you're out. And I was like, how about we just get rid of, uh, yeah, you know that? Um, Tom says uh, Larry King was the master of not knowing very much about the guest, and he still asks good questions. My favorite: Google Larry King Jerry uh, Seinfeld, because he didn't know about the Seinfeld finale and, and kind of hinted that like Jerry got canceled, like the show got canceled and Jerry's like, are you seriously, you don't know? Like it was so fun. So yeah, you gotta know something. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. Don't make yourself look stupid. Um, yeah. I, Oh, DR. Yes. She says, I'm not fun of the intro. Tell our listeners about yourself to me. That says, Hey Jim, thanks so much for coming on the show. I didn't do any homework. Uh, fill us in. Yeah, but the flip side of that is someone who reads a five minute bio and oh. just botches it. Like, yeah. you know, and it, it, listen, as soon as someone else starts talking about another person, I check out. I don't, I don't want to listen to someone read a bio about somebody else. Now, that doesn't mean nothing. Like, hey, you know, hey, I, so, you know, I'm here today with Dave Jackson. He's, he's a, he's a podcaster, an author, and host Ask the Podcast Coach every Saturday morning, 10 30 Eastern. But Dave, you're really give, give us what are you you know what what is it about you that you're most excited about, right? You can phrase that any way yeah. you want. But people introduce themselves better than anybody else because they know themselves better than anybody else. So, I I think it's a combination of the two. You need to be ready to tell people who they are, but then let them have a moment in the sun. The other thing that does for them is it gets them comfortable because. This is material they know better than anybody else, which is themselves. And so if you can get them talking about themselves for the first two minutes, maybe you'll calm them down. They're good at the material. Usually they don't forget their own name and they can pronounce their own name correctly kind of thing. And, um, and you get really good content from them. Then they're settled in for the interview and bam, you're off to the races. But I've, I've watched people botch the bio and or say things that weren't correct they didn't run the bio by the guest before they said it and then you get to the end of the bio and you're hey welcome to the podcast and like actually that thing that you just said about me is wrong <laughs> well nothing squashes an interview quite like your guest correcting you for something incorrect right out of the show oh, that's so always fun i i think it's a combination of both like i don't think you just want to say Hey, Bob, welcome to the program. Introduce yourself. Like, that's a little right. awkward, right? Right. If they say, hey, for Jim, sure. I'm, I'm so happy. to On today's show, um, he worked for Commercial Federal Bank uh, back in the 90s. He was the director of enterprise information at uh, Omian Worldwide. He was an associate at Candidates International. Anybody else asleep yet? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's that's Jim's LinkedIn bio. And you've mispronounced those two businesses. Ah, there we go. <laughs> you didn't run it by me. It was Omnium and Cadence. Well done. Right. And like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this guy's a jack. Anyways. And so, yeah, if you're going to do that, make sure you're getting those things right. But in, in, in some regards, let the guest have a moment to, to, to promote themselves too. Don't, don't steal their thunder. Yeah, I always say, like, I think when I had Katie on, I was like, I'm excited to have her on the show because she got 100 million downloads. And I think sometimes we we use the the LinkedIn bio to get people excited that, wow, this is who we're listening to. And it may, I don't know if it's just me. Jim, if you bring somebody on Home Gadget Geeks, I already assume they're going to bring value because I trust you. Like Jim's not the guy that's like, Hey, I need somebody with a pulse for my show. Can somebody come like, no, that's not Jim's style. He's going to bring somebody on and they're going to talk about something that's going to be interesting because Jim cares about his show. It's the people that are like, I need a pulse. I see that in a, there's two things that I see. And I just kind of want to go either. You didn't think this through or I'll see like, Hey, I'm looking for guests for my show. And that's literally what they will say. And guess what the first thing that somebody replies is? What's your show about? It's like, so I see that a lot where it's like, I need a co-host for my show. 
what's your show about? Or, you know, I would love to be a guest on somebody's show. Great. What's your expertise? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, put yourself in the other person's mm -hmm. shoes. But yeah, for me, I, I don't need a long bio, you know, tell me what they're here. Tell me what the subject is about. So if Jim says, Hey, on today's show, we're bringing on, um, you know, Jill, whoever, and she's an Etsy expert. And, and, you know, if you haven't heard about Etsy, there are a lot of people just crushing it on Etsy. Okay. Now for me, I might go, eh, I'm not an Etsy fan and I'm out. But on the other hand, if I am interested in, you know, I've never heard of Etsy. She's making money at it. I might stick around and I don't care that her dog's name is Tippy and she went to West Point and, you know, her husband's name is Bob. I, I don't really care. And so, yeah, the sooner you can get to the good stuff, the better. So, yeah, that's that's the fun part. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. And I'll say, look, I, I know I just read your bio, but but we want to hear from you. Like, what's the most exciting things right. you're doing right now? And in, in you, you'll hear it in their voice. That, hey, thanks for having me on. You know, right now I'm, I've got this conference coming up that I'm super excited about and I'm going to get this opportunity to, to be the virtual host for it. And I got these things happening and this kind of stuff is going well. They'll just say it so much better than you could ever read it. So I yeah. think, like I said, I think a balance, a balance is needed somewhere in there. Yeah. And the thing is, this is the thing you need to practice as a host to make sure you're good at at reading someone's bio and that you've read it before you've read it once out loud. So you know where you're going to trip up and where, where problems are going to be. It just takes a little practice. I think some folks think they can just go out to the internet, grab a few things like you did, Dave, just read them on the fly. Right. You know, you might want to spend a minute with your guest saying, if you were going to do that, say you and I were going to do that. You're like, Hey, I'm going to read this. Just make sure I have everything right. Let me read it to you that would be a really smart thing to do with the guest before you read their bio. Yeah. Coach Dave is bringing up Sean Evans. If you watch hot ones on YouTube, phenomenal interviewer. And I've, I've, I've seen one video where he explains kind of how he re he has a team of course that helps research that one thing you can do, especially if you're dealing with like somebody's assistant, ask the assistant, like, what's a good question? What's a good story that so-and-so has not talked about yet? I'd love to hear that because they know that person and they know what they don't want to talk about. So not going to say, be sure to talk about his four marriages that have failed. Like, no, they're not going to bring that up, but they'll, they'll bring up the good stuff. And then I think he goes out to, uh, I I've heard him talk about, he, he reaches out to people that went to high school with them. Like he must do a lot of research, but, uh, he says, uh, uh, Sean Evans, you know, find something they're proud or laugh about and introduce them from that emotional place. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about emotions. Uh, my next episode of the school of podcasting is going to talk about AI and all sorts of robots that are going to be coming more and more into podcasting. And I'm like, we're going to have to lean in to the humanness of us as hosts, because until they, and it's only a matter of time till somehow chat GBT is going to be like, you know, a rabbi, a priest, and a donkey walk into a bar. You know, it's only going to be a matter of time until they somehow it's always artificial about that pesky rabbi. <laughs> that, um, you know, so that's going. So that's going to be the the next episode of the the school of podcasting. It's going to be be tricky. Um, but to um, let me see. Uh, we're still on that same guy's question about how starting a show. He had more. Yeah. How do I find a topic that other people will be interested in? There's only one way to find out if this cake is good and that's to make it, you know, I, I my question for, for, I forget what this person's name was. Oh, I didn't copy it. Well, listen, who, who saw D and D coming back? Like, yeah, nobody, nobody was predicting that. And then all of a sudden that thing comes flying back. You know, it always been, it had always been there. It had been an undercurrent, whatever, yeah. but you know, critical role. And there's, there's other ones in there, but bring that thing back. And movies are being made about it now, right? Yeah. It's having its day in the sun, but who would have thought, you know, uh, five years ago, if someone would have said, you know, I'm really passionate about D and D. If someone said, nobody's doing that, they'd have, they'd have been wrong. So you just got to try it, right? You got to get out there, follow that passion. If you're really passionate about it, it may never pick up, right? You may start a podcast about, uh, about sunflowers. You're super passionate about growing sunflowers, right? And guess what? That that may be 
so so specific you get 15 people the 15 people you do get though are going to be super passionate about it that like if you waste that if you waste that time and you don't engage those 15 that's the mistake the mistake wasn't starting the podcast the mistake was you were given 15 people and you didn't do anything with them yeah so you get listen it's not always about thousands in fact i think sometimes thousands are a problem I think hundreds are a great number. And if you get dozens that engage with you in a, in a, in a way that's satisfying, run with that. That's good enough. That's my opinion, but that's good enough. Yeah, I'd rather have 500 people that were super engaged than 2,000 people that were like, meh, it's all right. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, the one thing I don't think I've ever heard you talk about, I know we got about five minutes. Somebody asked about pre-production and how do you plan your podcast? And I've explained mine before where I basically, I have to write out a blog post. I didn't about three weeks ago. And when I listen to that episode, I cringe because I'm just all over the place. Yeah. Um, what's your like process for uh, your, your pre recording? Like what's, how do you make an episode? I guess is what yeah, very saying. different between Gallup and home gadget geeks. So mm. home gadget geeks, I generally have podcasters and, and I have a group of folks that are they know what we're doing. So that pre-production, I've had them on before, is pretty simple. We have a little conversation or I just ask them, hey, um, you're coming on the show in two weeks. Send me a little bit of an, send me three or four things that you want to talk about mm. and I'll build the outline around that. And I can take four sentences and go an hour and 20 minutes. That's no problem there on getting that one done. With, with on the Gallup side of things, we actually do pre-calls and then we'll do a pre-call for subjects. So we'll get together and say, Hey, tell us, we want to build a case study and we kind of use the case study format. We dance around it, uh, but, but we, we, we use that as a base to say, Hey, what was the problem? What were the things that we thought about? What was the solution? And then how are we progressing forward? Right. The case study format. And we just talk it through. And then I actually, in this, in this case, um, I actually ask them, you provide an outline for me of what you think is important. You can be as specific or as general as you want. I need that in a couple of weeks. And usually I get that from them. I fashion the interview around that outline. Again, they know this better than anybody. <laughs> why, why, why not let them fashion the content? So that's, that's how we prep for it. Nice. Well, um, it's so fun because as you were talking, I was like, oh, good. Oh, um, you said pre-call. Yeah. And Scott Johnson from What Was That Like? is all about the pre-call. He mentioned this in uh, um, uh, the question of the month. He says, because what happens is, A, you can figure out, does this person know how to join Squadcast? They've got that over with. We know what they sound like. We're telling them they can't use their laptop mic. He goes, but the other thing he's finding is then when you join for the actual interview, there's a little, it's not brand new. It's they know kind of what they're doing. And he goes, and they're more relaxed. He says he's finding it that he's getting, it's easier to have people tell their story because they're not freaking out because they think it's a radio show and they know it's not live and they know they sound good. And he's like, so he's like, he is all about the pre-call now because it's really helping his interview. And I was like, you know, that's not a bad idea. Plus you, you kind of know where you want to go when the interview starts, you've already done your investigation and now you've kind of got, some sort of confirmation of like, yep, that's where we're going to go when we start. So that might be something I do in the future. My, the thing I'm lucky because I do a podcast about podcasting. Most of my guests, they know a podcast, so I yeah. don't have to do that. But in the case yeah. of uh, his last episode was about people squatting. So like you wake up and there's somebody living in your house. I don't know yeah. how that works. I have to listen to the episode, but I was like, that sounds really weird. So what was that like? Uh, dot com. But speaking of what's coming up on podcast, Jim, what is coming up on uh, Ask the or on Ask the Podcast Coach? Well, this is over. Next week we'll be answering your questions and uh, <laughs> live. Uh, but what's coming up on uh, Home Gadget Geeks? We spent some time with Bob uh, Buskirk and Ryan Kirshner from ThinkComputers.org. They have a podcast, uh, kind of uh, focused around computer builds. So if you're a gamer or you're building your own PC, their site they got a lot of information about that. So talked a little bit about Computex was coming up and then building your own computer and GPU prices and super nerdy stuff. We got our nerd on. So if you, if you like that kind of content, it's available right now, homegadgetgeeks.com. And on the school of podcasting, I mentioned it earlier, I'm going to be playing with 11 labs. If you haven't heard about 11 labs, 
it's I think it's dot io. It's eleven. Spell out the word eleven. Um, it is a tool that will clone your voice. It's spooky. Uh, so when we talk about that, so I could ask chat gbt to write a script and then throw it into 11 labs and have me record my podcast so we will be talking about the spooky robots coming to take your job because in some cases there are spooky robots coming to take your job and hence we got to lean into being a human so that's going to be on the school of podcasting and uh, for anyone who said hey what happened on last week's episode i changed my i had to take my sister to the uh, grocery store and in a long story short I, i totally forgot to publish it it's done so you'll you'll see over the next couple days where I will be releasing this episode and last week's episode that his I didn't realize until I went to make the Canva art. I was like, wait, this is 438 and the website says four. I'm like, oh, I never published 438. So sorry about that. Thanks to the uh, the chat room. Thanks to Coach Dave for the super chat. And uh, we'll be here next Saturday with another fun filled episode of Ask the Podcast Coach. We'll see you later. Thank you.